everybody. I'm so glad you could come. I bid you welcome. Today is an exciting day. These are exciting times. Centipede Press has delivered a great big box with a great big book inside of it. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Some excitement. Have you ever heard of a person named Bram Stoker? Have you ever heard of a book written by this person called Dracula? In fact, this book called Dracula spawned a movie called Dracula, starring Bela Lugosi that I grew up with. It was made in 1931, so I post-dated it by a far margin but I grew up watching that movie and I loved it and I love it now and I can watch it over and over and over again every year at least once watching that film <clears throat> but what I'm here to talk about today is something called Powers of Darkness and Centipede Press has just published this fat book and they say by Bram Stoker. And there's a lot of confusion about this Powers of Darkness book, or these different books called Powers of Darkness that have come out recently. And I am going to do nothing but increase that confusion. So stay tuned, folks. Anyway, I, I'll try to get through it as much as I can. Powers of Darkness is a translation from a Swedish book which was published in a Swedish newspaper over a course of two years, and it was fat. There's a lot of confusion over who actually contributed to this writing. Some folks feel that it is a translation of early scripts from Bram Stoker. And some of the reasons why they say that is some uh, English-isms, whatever you want to call it, that are found in there. There are some scenes in it that were only found in Bram Stoker's notes. They weren't published in any of the books. And so some people say, well, that means that this must have been translations from Bram Stoker's early manuscripts predating the publishing of the book Dracula. Um, others find that the preface plagiarized writings from a priest wasn't part of Bram Stoker's work in any way. Some people feel like journalist Anderson Atterberg perhaps uh, wrote a lot of this stuff using some of his other writings, stealing stuff from other folks, combining it with other things, and came up with a, this extra stuff in this Swedish book called Powers of Darkness. Um, there was also a Swedish book, Powers of Darkness, that was published originally in a magazine, a magazine that came out two issues per week. And that edition shortened the original Swedish Powers of Darkness. And the end was changed considerably. It was changed in a way where it went from diary style to a regular standard type of books with chapters and such. And then from there, an Icelandic translation came out that shortened it even more. And these, if you go look up Powers of Darkness, you go on Goodreads, you're going to find a version that's shorter than the book Dracula. And that's probably what you're going to see right there. That shortest of the shortest of translations. And it's not very popular. It's got a relatively low Goodreads rating because it seems like the end is just cut. <clears throat> what we're talking about today is the, I guess you would say, the original Swedish translation that was published in a newspaper over the course of two years. It's about double the size of the book Dracula from Bram Stoker. There are a lot of extra stuff, extra scenes that weren't in that book. There are some changes that were made the throughout the book and different characters, different names, different endings. It's very different and it's much larger. So all that to say, nobody really knows if this was a translation of Bram Stoker's early work or if this was a translation of Bram Stoker's book where somebody else made some changes, added some stuff, and took creative liberties with it. Don't know. 
But I got from Centipede Press a what seems like it should be a phenomenal version of that book, and I can't wait to get it open. So let's stop soliloquying. Let's stop all that. And let's get to it. Let's open it up and see what it looks like. This is a, a publication from Centipede Press that I think has 11 full-page illustrations, four double-page illustrations, lots and lots of stuff. And uh, we'll take a look at it and check it out together, you and I together for the first time. Can't wait to see what she looks like. So if, you've, uh, if you're messing with Centipede Press books at all, First of all, you're liable to get books shipped in some interesting containers. This one says that it contains book numbers 380 through 385 of Powers of Darkness. I'm assuming that's not the case. I don't mind if it is. But anyway, you often will reuse packaging and such. Hey, saves a dollar, works for me. So I got my book wrapped in some bubble wrap. You can hear it popping in this great big box. And I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping that there's no damage or dings because this is a uh, highly sought after book and it was oversold. So originally they sold more copies of this numbered signed edition than they actually had. Uh, stuff screw up snafus with the systems and all that stuff, I don't know. So they had to refund some folks their money and offer up some unsigned copies and stuff. So hopefully mine's in good shape because I don't think there's replacements available. And the book is wrapped in a shrink wrap. You can see some stuff there. Let's take it out of the shrink wrap, get her opened up and see how sweet it is. Get it opened up. The key, this one is, this is tricky. You gotta get this plastic off of the book without damaging the book. And I've got a secret, a secret for doing that. What I'll do is I'll take and I'll cut the plastic and I'll cut the plastic in a way that I don't cut the book. And that's uh, that's my secret. If you cut the plastic and not the book, then you're guaranteed to not cut the book. Guaranteed every time. Uh, now the rest of the way I gotta rip it off. Get the plastic off. Some folks leave them sealed. I do not. I've learned lessons over the years. Let's get them out and get them open. And here is the signed and numbered edition of Powers of Darkness. And I'm excited to have it, excited to see it, excited to show it to you folks, my friends, what I got here. Uh, so that's the book. Let's take this dust jacket off. I wanna see what the dust jacket looks like all spread out. Hey, then we'll, then we'll take a look at our book itself and see how pretty, how pretty she is. So there's the stretched out dust jacket and man, it looks good. It looks so good. I love the artwork on the dust jacket. And I, man, it looks good. See the inside, how shiny that is? I can't tell you what it is, but it's some sort of something with shininess on it. And this is more excitement. Centipede Press has hooked us up. Look at that foil stamping on the cover. Cloth bound books, two color, was that two color? Three color foil stamping on the spine. Can you see the shiny? Can you see that? Wow, looks so good. I don't know if this one's better with the dust jacket or without the dust jacket. It's hard to say. And there's our Smith's sewn binding there. Ribbon marker installed and the top edge stain on my book. You can see it's the top edge only. Now what I want to do is open this thing up. Let's take a look at the signature page first before we go any farther. Mine is signed. Let's, uh, well, look at the back. Look at these end papers, black end papers. Check this out. I told you about it, artwork. As I'm trying to find my signature page, I've stumbled onto some artwork. So the back of the signature page, you can see has artwork on it. The signature page itself has artwork on it. And there's my number. What number do I have? 389. So, Bram Stoker, Powers of Darkness, has been limited to 500 copies for sale. This is copy number 389 and is signed by Bram Stoker. It's a facsimile. The notes right here, facsimile signature. He lived 1847 to 1912. Also, 
by Ricard Berghorn. Ricard Berghorn wrote the, wrote the introduction, I think, to this book. Ruth Sanderson, Harry Brockway, Igor Karash, Turbaram, Sandog George. I don't know how to say these words, but there it is. I'll show it to you so you can see it up close yourself. And Vladimir Zimakov. So, sorry, I'm bad. I know, I'm ashamed. There's the signature page. This looks so good. Looks so great. And now, let's go to the beginning. Let's go to the beginning and start at the beginning. We started at the end, then we'll go to the beginning. So, black, plain end papers. And let's get started looking at the artwork included here. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm really excited about this, if you can't tell. And a lot of folks, a lot of other folks were excited about this. Powers of Darkness, the first Dracula is what is being dubbed here. Translated from the Swedish with an introduction by Ricard Berghorn. Edited by S.T. Joshi and Martin Anderson. Illustrated by a variety of people. I'm going to try to say these names. Harry Brockway, I think I got that one. Igor Karash. Turbaram Sandorj. That one's off. I can't get it. Ruth Sanderson and Vladimir Zimakov, published by Centipede Press. So quite a few illustrations in here from quite a few different people. It also includes a foreword from Docker Stoker. Let's take a look through here. I'm going to try to find these illustrations. There's our foreword by Docker Stoker. Let's look and see what else I can find in here relatively quickly. A lot of illustrations but I don't know how easy it will be to find them. We'll see. Tom Harker's Journal. There we go. Let's get your fingers out of the way. Let's see if we can show these pictures. So I'm assuming we're going to see a variety of illustration types because it's from a variety of illustrators. And you can see as I flip to these pages, they stick a little bit slightly from the, the top edge stain I'm assuming that should cause me no troubles. So far, they seem to be coming loose relatively easily. As I, as I said before, already we're seeing a large variety in the types of illustrations that are included. And this one I <laughs> looks really, really good. I don't know who's done what in this book. But I'll show you what I got in... We'll go from there. All right. Looks cool. Excellent. Looks cool. I like the variety. And I, I like the quantity as well. So many different types, uh, style types. And it's a neat, a neat way to produce a book. Now there's, I think Jared at Centipede Press is considering doing Another print of this book, which will make a lot of folks happy. And I just hope that there's some distinguishments between first prints and second prints. Most of us book collectors, we like to collect first prints of things. So if you're going to make a, a second print, I really hope that there's some way to distinguish one from the other, that they aren't exactly the same. That could cause a little bit of disappointment among, among some of us collectors here. And I'm sure Jared will figure something out to make it, make it just right. Be able to get the additional folks that wanted this book copies so they can have it on their shelves while not taking away from this limited edition book that I have right here, 500 copies of first print run, and then make another limited edition that's exactly the same. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some, some way of figuring that stuff out and we'll just leave it, uh, leave it to the experts to handle however they handle stuff. I think we can trust our friends at Centipede Press to do things the good way, the right way. And I'm looking for some more illustrations here. I don't know if I've missed any, but I think I've got, I've got more to show you. Ah, just trying to show you all this stuff. So the print, you can see the print in here is relatively small. The font size, it's small, and uh, 
It might not be ideal for the, the uh, tired eyes, but I've seen on this original Swedish translation, I've seen uh, one, I think, I, I've seen one version that said it was a thousand pages. And this is, I think, 824 pages. We'll verify that. But it, maybe there were some steps taken to, to shrink it a little bit. Because as it is, it stands right now. I love this artwork. It's a large book, and there's a lot of stuff included, as usual with Centipede Press. They do a great job of trying to make their editions the ultimate editions, to include as much stuff as could possibly be included. And therefore, if anybody else comes along after the fact, then uh, I dare say their version will not be more complete than the centipede press version but i think i already showed you this one here and that's that's what i got it's all the lies i can think of to tell so thanks for joining me thanks for watching along if you have any interest at all please like the video subscribe to the channel i do truly appreciate it but that's bram stoker powers of darkness from centipede press say la vie baby doo doo